Section 7.3, example 4. So let's find the equation of a hyperbola with vertices 0, 4, 0, negative 4, and asymptotes plus or minus 1 half x. So let's plot the vertices. That'll help me visualize if it's vertical or horizontal. So since it's 0, 4, 0, negative 4, those are on the y-axis. So it looks like I have a vertical hyperbola. So we don't need a perfect graph. We just The sketch is really going to help us decide which formulas to use. So because it's vertical, we know that it's y squared comes first. So y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. Hyperbolas are always a difference. And we already know the value of a, because a is the vertices. So 0 plus or minus a are my vertices. So a is 4. So that means I'm going to have y squared over 16. And we'll need to figure out what x squared is over. So we can use the asymptotes to find b. So we learn that the asymptotes um, for vertical hyperbolas are um, y equals plus or minus a over b x. And a is on top because a is basically my rise and b is my run, right? a and b. And so that's why it swaps for the other case, b over a because of rise and run. So y is representing rise, x is representing run. Um, so yeah, we know that a over b will have to equal 1 half. Um, we already know that a is 4, so 4 over b is 1 half. And you can solve algebraically, or maybe we know 4 out of 8 would be 1 half. So b equals 8. And so b squared is 64. And that's our equation, x squared minus 64. So we get y squared over 16 minus x squared over 64 equals 1. That's the equation of the hyperbola. So let's see what happens with shifts. Shifts are going to make really ugly formulas. But again, we're not going to find everything from scratch. And from the formulas, we're going to sh do some shifts. So the equation looks very similar. It's still a subtraction problem over a squared and b squared. Um, the only difference is you'll see the x's shift by h and the y's shift by k. So for horizontal, we have x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. The vertices are just shifts of the a, right? It used to be plus or minus a0, and you can just see it's shifting by h and k. Same with the foci, right? They used to be plus or minus c0. They're shifting by h and k. The asymptotes, same exact thing. It's the same exact asymptote, but shifting by h and k. I actually am not going to find the formula. I am just going to sketch. Um, eccentricity is the same thing. It's not affected by shifts. And that's really just telling us the steepness. Um, so the shifts don't affect that. Um, and so vertical is the same idea. It's just y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b equals 1. The vertices for um, the vertical ones used to be 0 plus or minus a. So now they're just shifting by h and k. The foci used to be... 0 plus or minus c, so now they're just shifting by h and k. And so if I have to graph one of these, I just find the aux box. And it makes it really easy to graph. Um, e Easy-ish. Um, so let's check this one out. We're going to have to do some completing the square and finding the aux box. So let's graph the hyperbola. 9x squared minus 72x minus 16y squared minus 32y equals 16. So it might not be obvious that it's a hyperbola yet, um, but when we complete the square, we'll see that. So we'll do the same thing we did with ellipses. Um, we'll do the x's together and the y's together. Um, so I'm going to start off by factoring out those constants. So for the x's, I'm going to factor out 9. We get x squared minus 8x, and I'm going to leave some room to complete the square. Minus 16, because it's a negative 16, I'll factor that whole negative out. And then it becomes y squared plus 2y and leave a space equals 16.
So let's go ahead and complete the square. So for the x's, we're going to do negative 8 divided by 2 gives me negative 4. And then when we square that, we get 16. So plus 16 will make a perfect square. And then since I added 16, I have to add it to the other side, but it was really secretly 9 times 16 because of the coefficient of 9. So for the y's, we're going to take the 2. We're going to divide by 2, and we get 1. We square it, and we get 1. So we add 1. Since I added 1, I really added negative 16 times 1. So we'll minus 16 times 1 on the other side. And so we get 9. For the x's, we're going to get x minus 4 squared minus 16 y plus 1 squared. And then if we do 16 plus 144 minus 16, it'll bring me to 144. And now it's starting to look more like a hyperbola. The subtraction is a big hint that it's a hyperbola and not an ellipse. Final step is to divide by 144. So the right side can be 1. Um, and I think we've seen 9 and 16 and 144 enough that maybe we know. So 9 and 144 um, gives me 1 and 16. So x minus 4 squared over 16 minus y plus 1 squared over 9, because 16 and 144 becomes 1 ninth equals 1. So this will be a horizontal because we start with x and it'll be a shifted hyperbola. So where is it centered? It'll be centered at 4 and then negative 1, because it's technically y minus negative 1 squared. So I'm not going to use formulas for the vertices or foci. I'm going to just count. So let's make room for 4, negative 1. I'm going to shift the graph over a little, and you'll see why in a second. It doesn't go very far to the left. So 4, negative 1 is my center. And I'm going to find that aux box, and then we can graph the hyperbola. So let's see, my x's are going by 4, because we have a squared equals 16. So a equals 4. This is horizontal, because this is x. So it just means we go 4 in each direction from the center. 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are my vertices. 1, 2, 3, 4. And the, um, so I'm going to take my center, and I'm going to add and subtract 4 for the vertices. Only to the x part. So this is the formula. The formula told me that it was h plus or minus a comma k, um, but I did it visually instead. We just go 4 and 4 from the center. So those are my vertices, and we get we can look at the graph or we could calculate it, but it looks like we get 0, negative 1. That's the 4 minus 4, and then we get 8, negative 1, and that's the 4 plus 4. So it's up to you. If you're more visual, you can just count on the graph, or you can use the formulas. Um, I don't think we know C yet, so we'll come back to that. Um, we're going to draw the aux box, so the y's tell me to go by 3. Since b squared is 9, b is 3. So we're just going to go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And that'll make my aux box. So the aux box, the center is in the middle of the aux box. And then you just go out by A and B for X and Y to find the aux box. And that's how I'm getting 2A and 2B for the size, because we're going A in one direction, A in the other. So we already have the asymptotes. We actually can already graph it, we just want to find the foci. So those are my asymptotes. So the graph is going to approach the asymptotes. So there's my graph. The only thing missing is the foci. So let's find c, and then we can find the foci. So c squared is a squared plus b squared for hyperbolas. So c squared is 
16 plus 9, which is 25. So c squared, c is 5. So basically, we're just going to go 5 from the center now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if you wanted to find the actual points, we're just basically taking that center and we're adding and subtracting 5 to the x value because we're going in the x direction. Or if you want to use the formula, which again I find overwhelming, again you can see it's the center h plus or minus the c value and then the y value stays k. Um, but I, al I almost always count, I don't, even use, I don't even use this formula, I just count on the graph. So we can see that the foci are at negative 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then this would be 9, negative 1, just from counting. Um, or you could find it from 4 minus 5 and 4 plus 5. But that's my graph. Um,